Hello everybody, welcome to the mess. Today, what I got going on is I got this, well, not this, tape. I got a new SCSI chip for the Amiga 3000. Uh, this is apparently the, oh, jeez, oh, whiz. This is apparently the upgraded one. AMD, uh, AM33 C93A-16 PC. So apparently, the SCSI chip that's in the 3000 now kind of sucks and you know more for less machines and running great uh, I do have to do an update on that thing for the new firewire support why am I doing this the 3000 while it works fine has some weird issues with SCSI devices mainly CD-ROMs you saw maybe you didn't see I don't know if I posted that video yet I did a big video on adding a CD-ROM to the uh, the 3000 and various SCSI peripherals. You can see over here I have a, a jazz drive, a zip drive, there's another easy 135 sitting right over here, another zip drive, a bunch of cartridges and some other crap. Uh, there is a 1010 Amiga floppy behind that little tripod and an external GoTech in the back over there. But when I hook a CD-ROM up to this, it's a Yamaha 4416 SCSI, uh, don't even know where it's at. When I hook that SCSI drive up I have all these weird issues where this light just freaks the heck out and it just doesn't function properly. I thought it was the SCSI to SD where the SD card wasn't passing information right, but the jazz drive and the zip drive just seemed to work fine. So let's get this moved over here. I'm going to try and capture this on the PC so we can get a clearer display afterwards. But for now we're going to open her up, swap this chip and see if it performs any better. So, that was just two, that was 10 minutes of moving just to get things sorted over here. So with that, I move the camera back. You know the drill, we take this thing apart more than it's together. Ooh, man, there's a lot of moving. You're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna remove the screws. It is literally opposite of the two CIAs. So here's my girl. We're going to put, note the notch orientation. Make sure we are under the chip itself and pull straight up. With the chip puller, you don't damage any pins. There's also the notch out. And she looks pretty good. It says prototype. Interesting. So with that, we're going to take our AMD chip and since it is bent to crap, I'm going to give it a little desk leveling of the pins. I'm just basically taking it on a flat surface and bending it a little bit to make it a little uh, more precise. Noting our notch orientation, we're going to insert this into the unit. There we go. Okay. Well, I do have a little fuzzy there I want to get off. There's a piece of fuzz, probably from one of my cleaning uh, binges when I did the motherboard. But it looks good. Uh, you can see my recaps, minus the couple showies that I missed. But they're looking good. Uh, this is the Revision 8.9 Amiga 3000. So with that, we're done. Not necessarily. I have to reassemble this, buddy. So in fast forward, as usual, we're going to go for reassembly. Here we go. You will know that this is one picky sucker. If you do anything to it, it gets mad, upset, jealous, angry, does some crazy crap. So instead of loading this thing up full of 
every card I own while it was working. We're going to take one at a time. These are picky. We're not even going to screw it in. We have power. We're good. Sometimes these ground out. I don't know what's going on. Especially this damn AMAX board. This board is just ever so slightly. I wish I could just take a machine lathe and just grind this down. There's nothing on it. It's a little too large for this board. Do you have power? Yes, I do. So while that's thinking about booting, I'm going to put the screws in the floppy disks. Just like that, I got the cover back on. Now here's what I have happen. When these are on, this will just go solid, won't do nothing. With the old SCSI chip. Do I have SCSI? I see access. CD called Amiga drivers. I don't know if it's Amiga. Or what? Open, please. I don't know about you, but I love the 3000. I love the look of it. Some people don't like the desktop case. I just think it's beautiful. I don't know. Just me. So here we go. CD-ROM. Do I have a CD? Uh, do I have a Devs DOS driver CD-0? No. So, actual Amiga OS Get Boinged 3.9. The SCSI chip fixed it. Is it fast? Yes, it's better. Audio. MP3s. Millennium Your Love. Millennium Bug. Circle Orbital. Beatmaster K. You May Lose. And Beatmaster K. Rumba Lat. What the old? Videos. 15 minutes. A bunch of AVIs. X Men Grinch. Titan Shaft. These are the demos. I've done uh, Amigos 3.9 before. I'm just making sure it looks and works nicely. I'm not going to install it because I'm... No, I'm not. I just want to make sure the CD-ROM's working and it's not freaking out. Here's the boot. We're looking a lot better. Uh, whoops. So here's the actual installer for 3.9. We're going to abort because we're not... We're not going to do 3.9 on uh, on this machine. I am happy with where it's at. If I had RTG and not the AMAX board, I would probably do it, but I'm happy with what I got going on right now. My CD-ROM works. Thank you, Western Digital Chip, or AMD Chip. This Western Digital 33C9A PL prototype. I don't know why it says prototype. Uh... Maybe I just had some weird thing. But, now I have a better SCSI. What was happening before? Why did I do this? Well, originally when I was using CD-ROMs, I did a whole video shoot on Amiga CD-ROMs. Like Amiga Format, Octomed, we'll put that in there. When I have CD Insight Technology, CD32 Gamer, fine. They're games, I can't play them all. But, when I put the disc in, I could see the disc, the drive light, on both this and this would just go solid. I could access the CD. This is a little slow with its, because I'm running ASIM and not anything else. Here it comes. It's slow. All right. So Amiga format, CD-ROM. Looks nice and it, it, it opens fine. When I clicked this, it literally took like three minutes to open four windows. So I stuck it on the 2000 to figure out what was going on. It's so much better now. Expe MM Experience. Install libs and fonts. Eh, whatever. Hopefully it ain't nothing crazy that it's gonna blow me up. What is this? Okay, well that's stupid. OS 3.9 is bootable media. So let's uh let's try and actually boot from it. We'll see in a second, because it's booting. There's 3.9, there's emergency boot, there's a working copy of OS 3.9. It is working much better. Awesome sauce. Alright, let's get this CD out of here. Oh, it's on my damn desktop.
All right, dark mirror is running. Your father's words echo in your mind. I don't want my joystick plugged in. With the zip drive for the Amax, I want to go to a Jazz type cartridge because a zip is just like a floppy. A Jazz is actually rotational hard drive stuff and it works a lot faster. And I have more stuff that I can load up on it. It's a gig per cartridge. And I have a boatload of cartridges that I ordered. And plus I have some other files I want to uh, get off of those and I have easy 135s. I have a lot of cartridge stuff that I want to play with. Just so to see if I could do it. And now that the SCSI is working fine, everything is back and better, and we can uh, put this back over on its original house where, uh, get it off my desk here, my work area. So that is the upgrade from the WDC chip to the AMD. It was uh, $14 on eBay. So if you have a 3000, uh, you need a SCSI chip. So I don't know what, uh, I think this is only for the 3000. But it's nice to uh, nice to get fixed. So if you have a 3000 you're having some weird scuzzy issues, upgrade this chip. And if anybody has a Buster 11, or Rev 11, uh, hook me up. Let me know. I'll buy it off you. So once again, that's everything I got for the 3000 for today. And we upgraded the scuzzy chip. We got the zip drive working on Amex. We got the OS 3.9, or just my CD working, just with the OS 3.9 uh, disc. And it seems to be OK. Played some iGame, and it seems to be working fine. So thank you for watching. I hope this helps you out somewhere, and I hope you learned something.